This is about to be the YouTube tutorial that I wished had existed back in 2020 when someone asked me for the first time to vectorize my Procreate artwork and I want to say that I nearly cried trying to complete that request, but in reality I cried several times. Today I am going to share with you a step-by-step -step process that I still use today to convert my Procreate artwork into vector illustrations. First things first, what is the difference between artwork that's created in Procreate and artwork that's created in Adobe Illustrator? Basically, what is the difference between when you export something from Procreate versus from Illustrator and why do we want to vectorize our file or what even is a vectorized file? So Procreate is a pixel art creator. That means that when you illustrate, create new layers, create and save text, it's all pixel art and that means that it is created from pixels very simple like in tiny little squares and when you think about when you are setting up your procreate canvas one of the settings that you put in is your dpi which is dot per inch which is basically your pixels in adobe illustrator you have the option to create pixel art as well but you can also create vector files which are not pixels they are actually objects and the main benefit of this to make it really really simple is that you can increase or decrease the size of a vectorized image or a vectorized element and it doesn't lose or decrease in resolution if you think about in procreate when you have your different layers if you create create a layer with an illustration, even if it's just a single color little shape, once you use your resize tool to resize that shape, even if it's to decrease it in size, it's going to lose a little bit of resolution. It won't have like crisp, clean lines anymore. And the more that you do that to that object, the more that you resize it or rotate it, the more you're going to notice it reducing in resolution. In Adobe Illustrator, once you vectorize an object, an image, a shape, or an element in a layer, you can increase the size, decrease the size, copy and paste it into a canvas with a different resolution, and the object itself doesn't lose resolution. The benefit of this for you as an illustrator and a designer is that you can create vector elements from your artwork that you can then apply to various different surfaces and products and you can scale those illustrations up and down in size to fit your needs or whatever product you're trying to apply them to. Now let's dive into how we can actually convert our Procreate artwork into vector files and vector images. So I've opened up Procreate on this canvas of an artwork that you may or may not have seen on my Instagram. This is a pixel image. It was created completely in Procreate. It has never been vectorized and we're gonna vectorize it today. So first things first, if I was to import this as it is into Adobe Illustrator and try to vectorize it as one single image, I probably could do it, but I'm not gonna get it looking as clean as it does here. This is why creating layers in your artwork is so important. So I'm gonna open up my layers menu here. I've got a ton of different layers going on in this artwork and I'm gonna want to import each of these into Adobe Illustrator one at a time to recreate this artwork inside an Illustrator and build back up the layers. So there's a couple of ways that you could do this. You could go over to your setting menu and tap on share, and then you could click the share layers as PNG files, and then just save all of the layers of your artwork in a folder and import them into Adobe Illustrator that way. The way that I personally like to do it is to use Apple continuity because I work on an iMac and so I will just copy a layer on my iPad and paste it into Illustrator on my iMac. You can do it whatever way it works for you. I'm gonna do copy and paste using continuity. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator as well. Okay, when you open up Adobe Illustrator, this is what it's gonna look like. Obviously, I use Adobe Illustrator a lot, so you can see that my workspace is populated with recent projects, but if you're brand new to Adobe Illustrator, here's how you create a new workspace or artboard as they are called in Illustrator. So we're gonna go ahead and click on new file. And then in here we have something quite similar to when we're setting up a Procreate canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to be the same size as my current Procreate canvas, which is 496 pixels by 5120 pixels. 
and then I'm going to select RGB as the color mode because that is the color mode that is selected on my Procreate canvas as well. I'm also going to reduce down my artboards because for this project, I really only need one artboard. So that's all that I'm going to put in. I'm going to go ahead and click create. And here is my artboard or my canvas as you might be used to calling it. So the artwork that we were creating from Procreate had a blue colored background. This is one layer that I am not going to import into Adobe Illustrator because there is no point in me importing basically a colored rectangle and vectorizing that to be a vector file. Instead, I am going to create a new background for my art forward directly inside an Illustrator. I'm going to click on the shape tool over here and I'm going to make sure that the rectangle tool is selected and then I'm just going to drag it out to fill but kind of go beyond the edges of my artboard to create the background for my artwork. So at the moment it is in white. I want it to be in that teal blue color from my branding color palette. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this rectangle selected and then I'm going to click my eyedropper over here and I'm going to hover over that teal blue color on my palette, click on the teal blue color and it's going to pick it up and set it as the background. So that is the first layer of this piece of art ready to go. Next, I'm going to go back to my artwork inside in Procreate. There are two rainbows in this artwork, one with warm colors and one with cool colors. I'm going to open up my layers and I'm going to select the warm colored rainbow first. I'm going to tap on the rainbow and I'm going to tap copy. And then over on my keyboard here, I'm going to use control and V. And with Apple continuity, it's going to paste it in to my canvas here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to get the cool colored rainbow using the same thing. I'm not going to resize them yet because I haven't vectorized them. So I don't want to reduce the resolution of them or like change the size of them in any way. But I am going to go back for a couple of elements before I start vectorizing. So now we have the first elements that we are ready to vectorize inside in Adobe Illustrator to build up this artwork in a vector version instead of a pixel version. I'm gonna start with a simple one, the black simple outline for the face. Over here on the right hand side of my Adobe workspace, I have my image trace tab. If you don't see this tab anywhere in your Adobe workspace, you're gonna go ahead above your Adobe Illustrator and click on window. And then down here in the window, you're gonna have a list of all of your different tools. I have image trace already ticked. So we have selected our smiley face. We have our image trace tools open. And now we're going to use this preset to select a preset to help us vectorize this smiley face. This smiley face is a simple black piece of line art. So I'm going to use the preset here that is called black and white logo. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click this advanced tab down here and I'm going to tick on this box that says ignore color. The reason I'm doing that is if I untick it, you'll see this is giving me a preview because I have my preview option turned on as to what the vectorized layer will look like. And it's blocking in the white where the transparent was. If I click to ignore the color white, then it won't do that. And I'll just have a transparent background because I don't want the back of my smiley face to have a white block that I'm going to have to remove. So I'm really happy with how this preview is showing up. I don't need to make any adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and up here at the top, I'm going to click on this button that says expand. And now my image has changed from an object or a layer into a vector. Now, if I click on my little cursor to move it and the bounding box appears, if I resize it, you see that it doesn't start to pixelate around the edges. If I decrease it again, it's going to stay looking sharp and clean. And that is our first layer of vectorized. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the the cream colored cloud Again, selecting the cloud. This time I'm going to go over to my preset. I'm going to click the three color option. I'm going to click ignore color white. So it doesn't give that white background. And then I'm going to reduce the color down to one because there is only one color, but it's not black this time. And now my cloud is looking good. I'm going to click to expand that. And there we go. This is also vectorized. Next, we have the white cloud. Now, because this is white, it makes it a little bit more complicated, but there is a little way around it. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to click invert colors. So inverts it to black. Now I can click over here to my preset. 
I am going to click on the black and white logo again because now we have a simple black shape. I'm going to click to ignore the white color in the background and then again I'm going to click expand. Now this cloud is vectorized but it's black so we want it to be white. We can either use our eyedropper to uh, change it to white. We can double click on this color square over here to open up our color picker and drag it back to white or we can go back to the edit colors up here at the top and click invert colors again and it brings it back to white. So now our clouds are vectorized and our smiley face is vectorized. We need a smiley face for each cloud. So I'm going to resize him to fit the cloud and then I'm going to click this little duplicate sign over here to create another one for this cloud. I'm going to select the cloud and the smiley face and then I'm going to click on group and I'm going to do the same for the other cloud and now when I click on it both the cloud and the smiley face move together so it's going to be easier for us to arrange our artwork at the end. Next we have our rainbows. These have three colors in them so we're going to select them and from our preset we're going to select three colors. Now it's giving me a preview that is showing me that it's only picking up two colors. So first of all, I'm going to click to ignore white to get rid of the white background. Maybe that will help because it's currently counting white as a color. Okay, we're still only getting pink and yellow, no orange. So we're going to back, go back to our color tool here and we're going to put it up to five, first of all, to see what that does. Now we can see the orange, but we're also getting like this little white halo around the edge. So I'm going to actually take it back to four colors instead of five. That's good. It's not perfect. I'm going to click expand and I'm going to resize this up a little bit. We could ungroup it so that the colors separate and then I can kind of like select around the edge here using the color picker then to match them to yellow and that's cleaned it up nicely. If this was a piece of client work, I would definitely go in and get all of those little odd bits around the edge and clean them up so they match the right colors. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the process for the cool colored rainbow. Now I'm gonna just zoom out and the next thing that I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna import my original artwork and I'm gonna just put it out here at the edge as a reference to help me build this vector version of it. So first I'm just resizing the rainbows, then I'm gonna select both of the clouds and resize them together so they are the same size. The white cloud goes up here and the cream cloud goes here like this. I think that looks like a pretty good ma match to the original artwork. It's probably a little bit higher on the canvas than it needs to be, so I'm gonna bring it down. The next thing that I want to bring in is the little twinkly stars because that's going to just finish off the illustration elements and then I can focus on the text. The last thing that we need to complete this artwork is the text. Again, I'm not going to resize it before I vectorize it. This is black text again, so I'm going to go into the preset for the logo one. This is usually the one that gets the text the cleanest as well from my experience. And then I'm just going to, again, ignore the background and click expand. And now I have vectorized all of my hand lettered quote. In the original artwork, some of the text is in white and some of the text is in black. So again, I'm gonna ungroup all of the text and I'm going to select the letters that I want to be in white. I'm gonna go over here to my color palette, drag it into white, click Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to reselect all of the text to make sure that I have all of the letters selected and then I'm going to regroup them so that they all stay together when I need, if I need to move them around again. The very last elements that I need to add are the colors that go behind the letters and my logos. So let's start with the color blocks. This time we've got six colors going on here. I'm going to click on the preset. We're going to try six colors first. We're probably going to have to adjust it because it was a recolored layer actually didn't do too bad. Okay, so we're gonna ignore the white. The only color that it has missed here is the orange. So what I'm gonna do is expand this and I'm gonna resize it. And I'm gonna right click on it to send it backwards. Arrange, send backward so that it's behind the text. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna click ungroup because I want to be able to select just this one and use my eyedropper to color that in the orange that it is in the original artwork. 
all of the rest of them have imported in the correct color so I can leave them. And the very last element that I need to factorize is my logo. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm going to click edit. I'm gonna click edit colors and invert the color because it is in white. Then again, I'm gonna use the logo preset, ignore white, expand. I'm gonna resize it and then use my color palette here to resize it in white. Now I have recreated my artwork as a vector file. I can save this in a couple of different formats. So if you are working with a client and they are asking you for a vector version of your artwork, I would go ahead and export this or save it in Adobe Illustrator format because more than likely that's what they're going to be working in. You can also export this as a PNG, a JPEG or a PDF from here, but your client's not gonna be able to open the vector file. That's basically it. That is how I vectorize my artwork inside in Adobe Illustrator. Now all of the elements of this piece of artwork can be scaled up and down in size to fit whatever size product or canvas that is needed. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you get reminders when new videos go up from me. If you're new to both Procreate and Adobe Illustrator, I recommend that you watch this video next, which is all of my top tips for setting up your Procreate canvas as a beginner.